Every time when we visit my grandma, she asked what we were gonna eat. And every time we asked for the same recipe, we wanted creamed parsley cut served alongside with pressed potatoes. And I just realized I haven't had this recipe for, I don't know, maybe 10 years or something. So I really got the crane for it. So without further ado, I'm gonna cook parsley, cod, served along pressed potatoes. One great thing with this recipe that you only need one frying pan. We're gonna cook everything in this and this will help the flavor to come together and bring a nice deep sauce. Throw in some knobs of butter. I think I'm using around 50 grams here. And what we're doing now is melting the butter. Once it's melted, we're gonna throw in some wheat flour and make a small roux. Now when everything is melted, it's time to throw in our wheat flour. And emphasis on little here. We only need one tablespoon. This will do plenty enough. We want to give the sauce a little bit of thickness, but it still want to have it a sauce. And to prevent you don't have any lumps in your sauce in the end, bring the wheat up to some heat and this will cook the wheat flour together with the butter. This will make sure that everything will dissolve. Once you feel your roux, aka wheat and butter mix is ready, time to throw in the cream. And this will help to create the whole dish all together. Throw in half a liter of cream here and give it a good stir. And I'm giving the old wooden spoon a break here and going with a whisk. It's pretty straightforward here when it comes to herb and spices. I'm using here parsley in quite a lot. If you have it on a balcony or in your garden, that's preferably of course. Lemon plays a key part in this dish as well. Although the fresh lemon is a more modern or my version of it, if we're gonna show you the truth, the original version from my grandma, we're gonna choose this spice. This is a lemon pepper spice. It's basically black pepper, I guess dried lemon and a little bit of salt. That's good also, but I think the fresh lemon will give it a nice kick. Let's cut up the lemon. I think half a lemon, as I said, would be plenty enough. We're gonna start with a little bit and then add a little bit extra. And of course, we're gonna need to rinse off the parsley before we get shopping. And the way I like to shop it is kind of roll it up like a cigar or something like that and make it a small ball and then shop away. This will have everything compacted and a nicer way or an easier way to shop, I guess. These fresh herbs together with a little bit of white pepper and a little bit of fish stocks will be the only herbs or seasoning we need actually. So let's get cooking. Once you feel your sauce is kind of cooperated, it's time to add our fish stock. And if you have fresh fish stock and cook it yourself, of course you're gonna use that. But I'm gonna be honest, I not, normally don't have freshly cooked fish stock back home. So straight from a Marco Pierre white commercial, <laughs> just used a store-bought one. We're gonna begin adding half of the parsley. The rest we will top off the dish with as well. Cup your hand like this and press in one half of a half lemon in that makes sense. This way of cupping your hand, the seeds will get stuck in the cup and not in the sauce. Give that a good stir that to make sure that everything is nice and cooperated and time to add our dry spice. And if you're going more old school, you will only use salt and white pepper. Black pepper, I guess, is a more modern touch, but I would stick as old school as possible, <laughs> exception from the fresh lemon. Give that everything a good stir and of course, as a professional or amateur or any kind of chef, we need to do the taste test. In this case, we need to add a little bit more lemon to give a nice freshness to it. But this is optional. If you want to add more or less, it's up to you as usual. Once you feel you have the salt and acid or lemon balance good, time to throw in the fish. I'm using here cod and stew pieces of cod. You can use frozen cod if you want to. And if you want to get fancy, you can use fresh fillets as well. The way I've been served this is more a comfort, easy, everyday dish. So I prefer more cheaper cuts of fish, if that makes sense. And the sauce kind of plays the main role in this recipe. And this is a beautiful part in this recipe. The fish will cook in the sauce and give the sauce nice flavor. And the sauce will give the fish nice flavor. So it's kind of win-win. After maybe one or two minutes, it's time to give it a flip. And if it's bigger pieces like this, you can scoop the hot sauce on top. This will help the fish to cook more evenly or and quicker, I guess. And I'm cooking this on a five of 10 scale heat here. So kind of slow, but you want it to simmer and not boil. Once you feel the fish is ready, and I'm gonna destroy one fish to show you here, you can poke it and feel with the finger if it's breaking and flaking apart. And as you can see here, the fish is just flaking apart and then you know it's good to serve. Hopefully you're done your job in the kitchen and have a hot plate to put the food on. We will serve this together with pressed potatoes as mentioned. And if we don't have one of these pressed potato machines, <laughs> you can go to a second hand market and buy them for around $5. So 
So I guess the big question now is, is that as good as I remember it? Well, there are only one way to find out. Yep, as good as I remember. If you got inspired by this recipe and want to learn more about Swedish food, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Guys, I see you in the next one.